Hello, all you Minchers enthusiasts on the internet. I'm Doc Eon. It's Monday, and I'm here to ramble. It is, in fact, Monday the 31st of August 2020, last day of the month. Uh, time goes by in a heartbeat. Anyway, we were looking at the Moonies, or perhaps it's the cult for Midsummer. I don't know. This is the, the, the cult of the moon goddess from... Uh, Midland Miniatures, and I decided to go with the name, what the name suggests, and painted them white and silver, mostly, with some deep blue uh, trim, like the belts, for instance, or a dark black blue, and the the sort of leader of the cult has some other colors here. She has some dark, like black elements on the inside and uh, actually her inner robe is, is a deep purple. Uh, I don't know if the difference between that and the black comes across. And um, yeah, they're a little speed painted. I mean, there are some details that could be uh, improved. But the thing is when you're painting 14 minis, pretty much the same color scheme, it's really hard to, to uh, go for really advanced levels you just want to make them match and you want them all to look reasonably good um, <clears throat> you might notice I've added a little bit of weathering or staining to the hems of their robes and I decided this almost at the last minute because I did uh, outside bases like grass and dirt bases so they should have been dragging on the ground and picking up some dirt logically speaking, realistically speaking. Uh, I mean, if, if, if I'd done inside, if I'd done like flagstone bases, like they were in a, a temple uh, building, uh, I could have kept them clean, but I didn't feel that was reasonable. They still look a little too clean. I, I could have done more with the weathering. But anyway. <clears throat> so these are all that I got done this week. I know, only 14 minis. What? <laughs> Look, getting as many as that done is only because they all have the same color scheme. Uh, that sped up the painting. You know, I, I, for, I, I could not have finished 14 different minis in this time frame, uh, given, given the, the limits on my free time now that I'm back to work. So, so don't expect to see to see uh, this amount of finished stuff uh, until until winter break comes along. Uh, but but I'm happy I got them done, and uh, I don't know when I'll ever use them for anything in gaming. But hey, uh, if they're standing on my shelf, maybe I will feel inspired to think up a use for them. Let's go on to uh, the work table. Hey yo, this dragon has a lot more color on him now. So this is what's on my work table right now. Uh, and, and this is mostly just um, airbrushed on base coats and then a little bit of dry brushing on some areas. I haven't gotten any further than that, but it's taking shape. And then we have the just worked a bit more on the skin tone of this guy. It's, he's kind of difficult to work on the skin tone because a lot of it is covered up. We have these sort of sculpted on tattoos or whatever they are, scarification, magical sigils, whatever these worlds and worlds that I have to paint last essentially. Um, so there's not that much skin to get at, but I, and I don't know if it can tell. It, no, it probably doesn't show. I've tried to highlight and shade the parts that would be lit by this flame in warm colors and the ones that would be in shadow in cold. So gone for a blue highlights on the green here, yellow highlights on the green here. Uh, I can't really say that it's made a difference. I'm, I think I might have to uh, increase that with some glazes or something at a later stage. I'll paint some more and we'll see. 
but yeah, th this sort of thing, <sighs> because I'm painting it for a competition, you just know that most of the people are going to do OSL. And if I don't do an OSL that really pops in the picture, nobody's going to look twice at my picture. So I'm kind of forced to do it, even though it's not something I often do. But I'm going to try to learn and improve my technique. That's what I do. And what do you know? I have, in fact, started prepping every Reaper Mini I got last week's uh, order. Uh, some of them more than others. Most of them are fully assembled and based and uh, ready to be primed. This here is the Graveyard Golem. I considered leaving the arms off, but yeah, it's a Bones Mini. I can get some dark paint into the 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 um, the areas that are hard to get to easily enough and uh, leave it at that and it's nobody will look at too closely at it and the goblin wizard whatever simple enough um, then we have the more uh, advanced pieces first off the orcus figure I like I imagined I placed it on this heresy minters big scenic rock base with skulls. I have not attached the wings because when you put the wings on, they're very close to the body and they cover a lot. I could technically probably bend these, but mm, they're very hard uh, alloy, mostly tin, I think. sounds like tin when you hit it more so than than other and I suppose this is to keep the weight of them down uh, so they won't so so they'll stick to the back and not fall off if they're really heavy the super glue wouldn't hold them um, I miss the days of lead <laughs> But anyway, so I'm, I'm, my conclusion is to paint these off the figure and paint the back of the figure also before I, I glue them on. Um, the other big scenic base, the one from Reaper, I put the Whispering Tyrant on, Tarbafon, Tarbafon, like a graveyard. Uh, the other Lich figure Nefsokar, I put on a graveyard base from MicroArt Studios. So he's like coming up out of the grave there as well. And the uh, uh, this was, by the way, a 32mm base. This is also 32mm. It's a chaos base from MicroArts. It's kind of like a hellscape. But the, the official name of them is the chaos bases. And then here we have the succubus in taking fight. So everything's fully assembled except for uh, this demon lord. And the next step is to prime them. I'm, I might want to file down some of these seam lines, the mold lines, a little bit more on his shoulder. But otherwise, they're ready to be primed. And we'll see what else I do with them. I promised I would talk a bit more about the Redgrass wet palette. This is what it looks like. It has a lid that has sort of rubber here as a seal. There is a strap, there's a, a sort of a rubber band that goes around it to hold it shut. We have the pad and we have the bottom. And there's magnets on the sides for attaching uh, some paint wells with for, for I've let this dry out a bit. I've used this for a while, and as you can see, I've gotten some paint on this, and it's been discolored. Doesn't really affect the functionality of it. When I wet it again, eh, though it's dry up a little bit here at the edge, but never mind. So the diff main difference uh, between this and my homemade wet palette is the thickness and, and the material of this sponge. The sponge cloth that I use in my homemade palette is one that's for washing dishes, and it's thicker, holds more moisture, 
And that means with my old palette, I, I get the issue that paint never dries up, but I get the opposite issue that if I leave it overnight, it will absorb too much moisture and become really, really uh, thin and fluid and uh, become unusable for that reason. And I've tried keeping it in the fridge overnight to uh, stop that, but eh, doesn't really help enough. This one has kind of the opposite problem in that on this one, if I spread the paint out on the paper in a thin layer, it will dry out. I need to keep it in it collected in, in a sort of pile of paint to keep it moist. Especially if, um, because it's thinner, the moisture evaporates quicker, which means if it's a hot day, I need to rehydrate this much more often than my old palette, like every couple of hours. Um, and, but otherwise, it works fine. It works exactly as a white palette should. It works as intended. I'm, uh, and, and I, I, you know, there, there, there's other slight difference in the use of it compared to the one I made myself, but that's something I can work with and learn over time and improve my technique of using this. But I, right now I'm going to put this aside because um, I, I, I'm, I'm a little bit leery of using it for everyday use because of the special papers I have to buy. So, and I, I, if I were to use this heavily, I'd go through like two of those a day. So, because I use a lot of different paints, a lot of different colors, because I'm painting several minis at once. So I need to swap my palettes often. Uh, but for travel use, for bringing it to the, the game store when those painting sessions start up again, it's perfect. Uh, however, for home use, I'm going to try another experiment, actually. And I'm not going to say any more. You, you'll just have to tune in again next week to see what I was talking about. For now, I'm putting this in storage. And might come back in later. Well, this week's haul is is a Kickstarter that arrived earlier than I expected. It's from a small outfit called Morgan Miniatures. I already opened it, and inside are the undead, the full set of four. It's it's just four skeletons of unusual types. Um, none of them are human skeletons, that is. So there's a, I think this is supposed to be the Dragonborn. It's hard to tell because the snout is rotted away. There's a gnome. A dwarf, a female dwarf, none, no less, and a centaur. Oh yeah, the, the body is still in here. And they came with these lip bases, which I don't usually use. So I'll replace those with some other bases. Um, these models are simple enough. So I'll just, you know, get started on them right away. I need to prep something new for next week. And I have one more project lined up that I want to do. I I, I opened up this model. I, I, I bought a few of these big metal Reaper monsters uh, a while back, some months ago. And I, I'm curious about the Burrowing Horror. The, so, the, the, so the Burrowing Horror is essentially a bullet. It's a land shark and comes with a head in two parts and it has two claws and a fin. Uh, so it sits it's like that. Uh, now <laughs> the funny thing is 
so so it's just the head and the four paws just breaking up out of the ground so you have to base these somehow um, I'm thinking I need a real pretty big base so I've, I've got this round uh, sort of wood base and I think it'll be kind of this this looks kind of balanced but I need to build this up I need to to make it look as if there's um, a tunnel through the the earth that this is coming up out of and I'm not sure yet how I'll do that um, how to make that look good um, do I want to make it one hole that all of this is coming up out of, or do I want to make like three separate holes, like like this ground in between here, and the claws are breaking up separately from the head? That doesn't make any sense realistically, but it's it's how the model would seem to work, unless I place. The, the, the paws are really close to the head maybe like it that that maybe is more realistic because it's it's like digging um, it has the hands in front for that reason it looks a bit cramped and not as visually interesting but mm, well I'll think about it I'm uh, I'll work on this until next week I'm not even sure I'll, I'll come up with something quickly you know I'm taking suggestions <laughs> I'll do some research see if anybody else on the net has has uh, done this model somehow and uh, we'll see what I do it's it might be a long-term project like so many others I'm working on right now but anyway that was it for this week if you enjoyed it click like give me a thumbs up subscribe comment share and be back in another week for even more ramblings same day of the week same channel same dakian who is now signing off